everybody and welcome to the Executive Insights series, which is in conjunction with KPMG. This is a series where we discuss with business leaders to get their insights into their strategy, their success, and of course the challenges as well that they've had to overcome. Here with me today is Ian Lina, who is CFO of Phineas. Um, so thanks Ian for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Um, I'm going to start uh, with a question around the Elevation Award, uh, which you received uh, last year. And I guess it's a highly competitive and highly prestigious award and really tries to honour companies really punching above their weight on the international stage, but still highly significant at home as well. I guess I'd like to get your insights into, I suppose, what were some of the key strategies, um, I suppose, that led to the award uh, and ultimately your success as well? Yeah, I think for us, there was probably two key areas which uh, got us the nomination in the first place. And as we go back a little bit and look at what is the vision of Phineas, and the vision of Phineas that is a company that looks for a world that protection is available to everybody, you know, whether they are ill, injured, or, or sick as individuals. And within that, we have a purpose defined as well. And what that purpose is all about is how we enable that vision from our perspective. And that purpose is bringing superior insurance technology to the world. Now, I think those combined facets and how we executed against them were a key part in terms of our nomination. And that could be uh, shown in terms of our market presence internationally mm -hmm. and domestically. It can be shown by our revenue growth and also the, the endorsement from our customers. So I think that played a key part in it. It's one key part of you know, why we were nominated in the first place. A second key area, which, which is growing in importance as well, is we obviously recognize that our number one asset as a company is our people you know, what they deliver to the company. Uh, so our investment in people's education, in their training, and also because we're a global company with a diversified and global footprint, uh, we had to ensure that we were complying with the, the DEI type, type constraints. Um, and in so far as that, we have a program called Embrace, mm -hmm. where we work very closely with our employees all around the world and ensure that, that everybody is, is included and you know, everybody's treated equally, everybody's given opportunity. Uh, and in turn, that helps in terms of how, how we retain company, people within our company. Also, as a public company, and indeed as a, as a responsible company, how we look at other stakeholders in the world is important. So our investors, our, our partners, our customers, and so our ESG, approaches as well in terms of our approach to, to the environment, our approach in terms of you know, the social uh, dimension and, and that's really exemplified by what we're doing in DEI and also the governance of the company. If you look at those two elements put together, uh, incorporating the, you know, our footprint within the, the global sector, uh, what it shows, we believe, is a very strong platform for continued growth and prosperity for the company. And I believe ultimately that's what won us the award, is that propensity to grow further as a company with that solid foundation. Sure, and that's a very rich answer. I guess you've touched on a number of areas and I guess there's a lot of companies looking to emulate your success both internationally and domestically. I guess what would be the key words of wisdom you'd have for those wanting some advice uh, to repeat some of your success, I suppose? Yeah, well, look, like every company, you know, we, we've, we've done a lot of good things and a lot of right things, and we've also made some mistakes along the way. So, we, mm. you know, it's important that you learn and learn quickly from the mistakes you make. <clears throat> but if I was to give advice to, to individuals, entrepreneurs looking to set up companies and grow companies, etc., first of all, focus. Be very clear about what it is you're bringing to the market. Uh, make sure that you have something that's compelling and winnable within the marketplace and winnable on a global scale because if your initial focus is domestic you be sure there's going to be international players looking at that same space as well so focus on what you're good at make sure that you don't diversify that focus in the pursuit of just trying to earn more revenue mm. because if you spread yourself too thin you're, you're likely to be a me too and, and not differentiate yourself so Phineas focused on core systems for the insurance sector other companies may have core systems to focus on, or they could be part of a, you know, a transaction chain. Hmm. And, and so focus on that. So the, you know, the initial piece is focus and learn how to, how to stay focused. So when opportunities come your way, uh, ensure you grasp the ones that, that are the right ones for you and learn how to say no to the ones that are not right for you. Yeah. Uh, that's really important. Yeah. Uh, I think the other thing that's really important as well that I would also recommend 
when you get a new customer, it's easy to, to think to yourself, this is great. You know, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity here, but do your homework. It's really important to do your homework. Get to know your market. How big is your market? Is it a market that will, will present lots of opportunities for, for sustainable growth? Understand your competitors around that market. Understand the influencers that are in that market, you know, that advise that market uh, and, and, and help it grow and, and prosper. But most importantly, within that market, know your customers, know their pain points, learn what it is you can do to address those pain points. If, you're, if your first step is to go in and talk to a prospect about how good your product is, how well it serves the market, and you haven't listened to what their need is, you may well lose that opportunity. So, so listen and understand the market. Yep. Yeah, good sound advice there, I think. Um, just turning back to some of the initial comments you made around growth, right? So I, in my research, you would have seen you've grown substantially over the last three years, which coincides with the COVID period. So be curious to understand how COVID, how it impacted on the business, really. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly had, had its impacts. But as a technology company, we had already embraced the infrastructure which allowed for better remote working. I mean, all our communications was done you know, via email, messaging, our telephone system was on Microsoft Teams. You know, so we had all that kind of in infrastructure in place already. We also made sure that as we communicated internally that everything was held in the cloud. So all our documentation in terms of our systems, our projects, our internal processes were already enabled in the cloud because we had a diversified workforce and we needed to have central repositories to make that happen. And of course, our software is a, is a SaaS based software product. So that was in the cloud. So, so that helped a lot as well because the systems were, were running from the cloud as opposed to remotely on customer sites. So in many ways, what COVID did was it accelerated a process that was happening anyway. And I think that acceleration was accentuated by the fact that all our customers and partners, etc., were in exactly the same boat as us. Nobody could work in the office. Yeah. So everybody embraced the need to work remotely. Um, and uh, we had many projects that were underway before COVID set in. And indeed, in the year 2020, we had more go lives with customers than any other year up to that point in time, whilst everybody was working remotely. But what's come out of that as well there is that um, we now got a hybrid approach towards working, and so do our customers. And that's helpful because what it also means is that for, for the expense of projects, for example, and customer sites where traditionally we would have had to uh, have a, an ex there would have been an expectation that we would have worked more closely with our customers face to face, that becomes more of a sporadic need. You know, so the expense of, of travel and, and overnight accommodation and subsistence, all that has gone away. And of course, you've saved time. You're not, you're not traveling as much as, as you used to do. Uh, and, and that has enhanced uh, the world as well in terms of the way we operate as a company. So, as I said, COVID accelerated a lot of things for us. But in, in its aftermath, what we have to think about is the hybrid working model mm. and how that matures out. And that's still a, a voyage of discovery. And that's one we stay very close to our customers and our staff on in terms of what we believe works best. I think we're all trying to figure that one out at the yeah. moment. Um, I don't think anyone's cracked it. Um, I might next turn to the insurance industry. And as an insurance leader here, it's also close to my heart. And I guess what I'd love to hear from you as a technology provider to the insurance industry, like what's most important to you right now? The insurance industry in many ways was a, a little bit of a laggard in terms of the, the embracing technology for their internal systems. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they, they are people, they're individuals, and they're, they're out there and they're using highly sophisticated products like Amazon, etc. So they have a very high bar of expectation when they do embrace technology change. So I suppose one of the challenges for us really to begin with is that there's a high expectancy in terms of what systems can deliver. And we're up for that. You know, we, want, we want to meet that high expectancy. Mm -hmm. But we've got to balance that with you know, our R&D expenditure and our return on that investment you know, and trying to get the right balance with the customer. We can deliver a lot every year, uh, but the demand will always be greater than, than what you have in terms of you know, time and, and money to make it happen. And so it's important you work closely with your customers to get that balance right. I think another important area really for us is uh, the whole area of you know, retention of staff and, and, and acquiring new staff. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, but particularly here in Dublin, which is a big technology center, you know, how, how you work with your staff and retain them is really, really important and something that, uh, that 
delivers to the customer. Therefore, it's something that we have to you know, continually uh, look at and seek new ways to make it effective. We have quite a low attrition rate, mm. so we're proud of that. And that's what we want to maintain. And as I mentioned earlier on, we're, we're a SaaS supplier, so data security is really key. We didn't have to worry about that when we were an on-premises hmm. supplier, uh, whereas now the data now is, is, is controlled uh, by us. So we've got to make sure that we're embracing uh, the right approaches to make sure that inadvertent or erroneous activity doesn't take place to, to jeopardize private data belonging to customers. So that, that becomes a big, big area for us as well. And lastly, I'd say it's core systems, as I mentioned, that we, we supply to the marketplace. So how can we find ways to continually allow our customers to, to get to market with what they're, they're mm -hmm. licensing from us in a, in a quicker fashion? Because yeah. uh, core system replacement is not an easy thing to do. It's right at the, the kernel of, of these companies. So what can we do to accelerate that uh, ability to, to avail themselves of this new technology as quickly as possible? And I suppose, slight twist, but given that you operate mainly internationally, um, how do you think the Irish sector is faring out? Well, we recently won a customer in the Irish sector, so, so we do see that embracing. We have some customers mm. here already. A lot, of the, a lot of the market in Ireland is, is owned by multinationals. There's very little you know, in terms of domestic players. We have some, some activity there as well. Um, I think there's companies coming in, there's companies going out. I, I think there's, there's less choice uh, than there was before in terms of where, where you need to move to. But at the same token, the, these companies have the same needs as exists in, in other parts of the world. You know, they want to deliver a better service to their customer, a more automated service to the customer. They want to generate that, that efficiency. They want to make sure that the individuals that work within their operations are focusing not on generic operational activities, but on value-add type activities. Hmm. So it's, it's an industry that, that's going through a lot of change. We, we see that in the markets we work in as well. So a lot of change going on in Australia and a lot of change going on in America. Hmm. Uh, so it's very dynamic at the moment and uh, it's, it's important that we keep an eye on you know, how, how it evolves and how we can help. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned some of the challenges, say around data security, for example, and just be curious if you've any thoughts on what policymakers can do better to support the Instex and the InsurTechs to help them grow and I suppose flourish and do what they need to do, right? Yeah, I mean, one, one of the things you know, I often say to people that, that would sometimes moan about the economy, etc., <laughs> is that a number of decades ago, the Irish policy around bringing in FDI worked very well for Ireland. The IDA have done a terrific job in building uh, a, a strong portfolio of international companies that operate in Ireland. And I think that provided the, the initial seed anyway for the indigenous mm. growth of companies. People that work for those companies then decided, I could do something myself. Or, and whether they were, were Irish born or, or came to Ireland, uh, that created then a, a flurry of activity in terms of, of Irish growth, which, which was very, very uh, important, I think, to seed in the industry. And then you know, out of that grew, you know, Enterprise Ireland then grew as well, and they provide a lot of support. So I, I think a lot of the framework is in place. But you know what I would look at, or the question I would keep on asking myself if I was a, a policy maker is, the type of companies we invite to operate in Ireland, wouldn't be nice if other countries were inviting Irish companies to do the same thing in their country. So how can we get a big global player that's an Irish company? Um, and how can we generate the environment to make that happen? And I think there's a lot of things in place like R&D grants, um, international investi market investigation type grants, etc. But one area I think we should look at is, is, is stronger programs around mentoring and leadership um, growth. You know, so when you get to a level of, 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 of size, how can you grow even bigger and, and, and get international help you know, to these organizations in terms of how to make that happen? Don't always let them learn by mistakes, let them <laughs> learn by advice you know, and strong <laughs> advice. And, you know, how can you help with that? Um, you know, I think is really important. And then also, uh, I think it's important to make sure the reward structure is right. Mm -hmm. you know, so if that's for employees getting share options um, and so on, you know, how, how do we get the tax in the right place you know, to really incentivize companies to set up here um, is, is really important as well. Yeah, uh, lots of good thoughts there. I have to leave the tax to my tax colleagues. But um, 
maybe finally to finish with a personal question um, I guess you've been with Phineas now for 22 years or so so congratulations on the tenure um, I guess things have changed probably a lot in that time and you've touched on a number of areas ESG DEI um, people as an asset and so on right um, just curious to know I guess what you think has changed most over that time and what you think is most important for success right now at this point in time yeah, yeah. for us <clears throat> we've been around for a while more than 22 years, obviously. <laughs> and uh, about 10 years ago or so, we, we, we once again kind of looked and said, who do we want to be next? You know, how do, how do we want to move forward in terms of our strategy? And one of the key things we put in place at that point in time was the Phineas Playbook. And, and that was all about alignment and, and culture. And within that, what we had to do was identify a set of values. And we couldn't just pick values out of, out, of the, out of the air that we felt were nice values to have as a company. You know, we had to observe and we had to get feedback in terms of those values. So we identified three key values across the company. And that was uh, the, the want, the desire to be high achievers, the uh, need to be customer centric, which is essential in terms of what we do ultimately. But thirdly, and, and really importantly, it's team players. Um, so one of the things you know that is enshrined right throughout the company is is the is the concept of team and operating together and everybody has a role to play all our goals are cascaded and lined down that way as well and what I you know a lot of the te leadership team are like me they have long tenures you know some more some less but we're a team as well and we operate as a team that's our first team we often say there's no egos in here leave the egos at the door it's all about the success of the company. It's about achieving that vision, that purpose uh, that I mentioned earlier on and having each other's back. So you know, I look upon the leadership team as not just being colleagues, but being friends and, and we support each other. Sometimes we juggle around responsibilities depending on workloads and, and, and the way the company moves and tra transforms. So within that time, I think that has been really, really important is, is team and, and mm. approaching it as a team and making sure it's not just about the individual, but to be successful, you've got to do it as a team. So thanks, Millenian, for joining us today. Hugely insightful and really enjoyed the interview. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you. No problem. And um, I suppose just to finish up, just to say thanks for everyone for joining us today on the Executive Insight Series in association with KPMG. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm -hmm.